Hey guys, to help run the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. My goal is to be unbiased and transparent. It's a privilege to serve you. This is not an endorsement. Let's get into it. Hey guys, we're in Washington, D.C. at the National Cathedral. I've never been here before. It is super, super beautiful. Kind of like these bikes. Specialized is known for just their cool style. And we're, like, we're looking at a 2020. This is the Vado 5.0. It's like top of the line in terms of uh, power and speed. It's a speed pedelec class three. 28 mile per hour. So if you're a commuter, it's gonna be a really excellent choice. It's got these really stiff and quiet aluminum alloy fenders with a little bit of a rubber end piece back there. And then this really long end piece on the front one, they call this the flex tender, and it's gonna keep your feet and ankles a bit more dry than a traditional fender that might stop here or here. So that's really innovative. If we come up to the front, they've got this dry tech labeling and that's talking about this little plastic piece that's sort of louvered to the sides apparently they tested this in a wind tunnel and when you're going fast the just the air movement of the tire circulating would push water out and up into your face so they designed this to kind of push it out to the sides which is just really cool they have a wind tunnel video back at the website that's kind of neat uh, so we're, we're actually looking at kind of a, a custom version of this bike with this metallic blue the actual bikes that you'll get, um, they'll be black. So they have this really nice looking black color. Uh, wanted to get this thing out here and get a close look and compare it to the 2019 version, which we have a step through back here. And one of the big differences is just the tires, right? Specialized does a lot of their own tires. This was the Electrac 2.0. Now you can see over here, we've got this Trigger Sport and it's a little bit knobbier, like still fairly efficient down the middle. So when you're riding at high speed and smooth concrete, it's not super loud. But when you go off road, you're gonna get a little bit more traction. We did take some of the Vado 4.0s off road yesterday and we climbed this really steep hill. It was awesome. It performed very well and it, it didn't slip as much as these older tires. Still have puncture protection right here. They call it like the black belt puncture protection, which is great, especially at high speed. And if you're riding regularly and you happen to cut across a park and you know, some stickers or something. It's nice to have puncture protection. Uh, both of these wheels have through axles, so 12 millimeter in the rear with a 148 millimeter hub spacing, right? So that's like boost, which was surprising to me. In the front, standard 100 millimeter, but 15 millimeter through axle. So you're getting that extra strength, that stiffness, and just the energy transfer when you're pedaling and steering. It's not a flexy, soft bike. This thing is, it's very precise. It feels like, an extension of your body, but there is a little bit more vibration as a result, um, especially, you know, look at the diamond frame right here. Even their step-through model, where they call it the women's, is still what I would consider a mid-step. And so they're doing a lot to reinforce that frame and just sending energy from your feet into the cranks, down to the tires. You can lock the suspension fork out, but I love that they do have a suspension fork. This is a fairly nice one, SR Suntour NCX. We've got that black anodized stanchion that matches, again, the actual version of this for 2020 is all black. So it's all gonna match, it's gonna blend in beautifully and it's got compression adjust clicker. There's rebound and preload. Okay, so this is a spring suspension versus air. It's gonna be very consistent, maybe slightly heavier than air, but air sometimes over time, the pressure might need to be adjusted a little bit. And for such short travel, 50 millimeters, uh, this actually has fairly wide stanchions and just a really nice build. It's narrower, it's sleek, it's a great setup. It's one of the nicer spring su suspension forks that I've seen um, out here. And it interfaces with that fender just beautifully. The fender, again, being wide enough to cover these tires. And if you look down here, there's 700 by 47 C, which is like 28 by 1.85. I love that they've got the reflective sidewall stripes for safety, especially with the black bike. We've actually got reflective stickers on the rims and on the fenders. And we've got integrated lights. This is a supernova. This is like the alloy encased one with an, it kind of dropped down a little bit so it doesn't get in the way of that display, which is really nice. You can see the cables are interfering just a little bit, but the cables are all very neatly tucked into the frame, internally routed, of course. And then we have the Supernova 3 LED rear light with another metal housing and another reflective sticker. So there's a lot going on here for safety, which is important when you're riding in like maybe the snow or the rain, or maybe you're hanging out like after work a little bit or early in the morning. I used to commute to work every day. Now I, you know, fly and drive a lot to do these reviews, but 
the weather can change kind of on a dime and it's nice to be safe like that's i just keep coming back to that and comfortable so on the one hand you have a sporty frame that's rigid that's responsive but then having the ability to adjust that suspension and dial it in for your weight to preload these springs or kind of unload them because i'm a lightweight guy i tend to, to unload them we've got the body geometry ergonomic grips and then a very comfortable saddle now, this is the the canopy comp and it's gender specific well gender specific so apparently between the two bikes They've optimized the fit a little bit for male and female. It's one of the few companies that, I think in 2019 they were saying men's and women's, and now I think they're changing more to like high step and step through, which seems to make more sense because I actually enjoy a, a more approachable frame sometimes when, when you don't need that sporty feel or maybe you're, you're not as style sensitive. It's nice to be able to approach the bike and get on without having to lift your foot quite so high, especially if you've got that rear rack loaded. And this is kind of a customized rear rack, very narrow, sleek. It would work maybe okay for some trunk bags, but they need to be a little bit narrower or it might flop side to side. I feel like this is more of a pannier hanger situation. But one thing I've noticed is that they, they don't have an extra bar here or a blocker for panniers. So I might get one with like a rigid back and then that sometimes they have this little like lever thing that kind of connects to the support strut. Um, they do have a bungee loop here as well. So there are a few different options, but it's, it's back to that like sleek sporty setup. Uh, maybe you've got like a backpack or something like that. That always helps to carry some gear, but at higher speeds, lean forward a little bit more, that can kind of vibrate on your back and neck. So I love that they've included a rack here, even though it's fairly minimalist, in addition to bottle cage bosses. So we've got two bosses right here. Looks like just enough room for a side entry, maybe a Z cage from Specialized if you wanted, or if you get the high step frame, we've got two pairs of bosses. So one right up here might be great for like a folding lock or something. And then one on the down tube, actually like mounted to the battery pack. I think that's really cool. Okay, we got a sticker slap guard here on the chain stay. I think we actually have another like kind of sticker, like a different pattern, different kind of paint on the bottom. And this nice plastic, I don't know, kind of some sort of a guard. I mean, it's not quite as sturdy as aluminum alloy, but it is vented. And this motor is, I would say, you know, kind of an upgrade. It's, it's one of the top of the line um, Broza motors. And it, they call it the 1.3 for specialized. It's specialized tuned their stuff to be a little bit higher speed and higher torque. It puts out up to 90 Newton meters of torque versus 72 Newton meters on the 1.2 motor on the Vado 4. So there's lots of numbers floating around. The point is this one has higher torque output and even the Watts 250 up to 550 versus like 525. The motor, it's supposedly it's, I think it weighs about the same, right? So it's like 7.5 pounds. I weighed one outside of a bike. There might be slightly more copper winding or whatever. I've done my best, but roughly that weight. I've got that back at the site and you can compare the bikes back to back. The battery is slightly heavier. So this one's like 604 watt hours. It's definitely more capacity, which is nice to have when you're riding at higher speeds or if you're using this to do trekking or something like that. And they've got a pretty good charger. So, you know, I'm always thinking about like, how is weight distributed? You know, what kind of range are you gonna get depending on the drive mode? Faster means more wind resistance. These tires have a little bit more drag than those, but I think they're still gonna be very efficient with the Broza drive system. And then this charger, 1.9 uh, pounds, which isn't too bad, and then four amp output. So a little bit faster. That's really nice to have, be able to toss this in your bag. You can take out the wall side, which makes it a little bit more compact and it has that magnetic energy bus, Rosenberger standard plug, which interfaces right here on the left side of the pack. And I love that they've got this little cover to keep like dust and water out of here that's on a leash. So that's not gonna get dropped and, and set down and lost. Some of the earlier, like original specialized electric bikes didn't have that leash. And I was always kind of like worried I was gonna lose it. So this is a nice little upgrade right here. And all this stuff, like the motor, the battery, the display, they're IP rated against water. So they're somewhat water resistant, which is really nice. Last year, we had the blocks display and it was removable, right? So you could take it off like this, take it inside, protect it if you wanted to. The new display, it's a little bit more compact. There we go. Not removable, somewhat adjustable in terms of angle, uh, but the the touch interface right here, like the button pad is, is the same. The big upgrade here is that now it's ready. It's kind of like set up to do mission control, which is like this iPhone app or Android app and allows you to dial in some of the different settings. I'm going to show you that in a few 
seconds, but I wanna keep going over some of the hardware. Like I'm going over it just kind of my experience with the bike. Like I'm always drawn into the display. I'm curious about it, but it's easy to forget like, how does the bike feel? How is the weight laid out? You know, what are the different sizes? And this actually comes in six different sizes, whether you're getting a mid-step or a high step. So you can dial it in. And it's nice to be able to go in and actually feel the bikes and go for test rides. And that's one of Specialized's big strengths. They do have a huge network of dealers. They've got a pretty great warranty too. It's kind of a two-year comprehensive, I think maybe even lifetime on the frame and fork. Um, just because they are working with those high-end components, you end up paying a little bit more for a bike like this. This is kind of top of the line for the US in 2019-2020, the 5.0. And I want to be clear that they used to have like a 6.0, so they're kind of like adjusting their numbers. For 2020, it's like the Vado 3.0, 4.0, 5.0, so top of the line right here. This is 5149. Okay, you know, so you're, you are spending a little bit more money, but it's feature complete, totally commuter ready very quiet and you can see some of the other upgrades here on like the drivetrain so this is shimano dior xt 11 speed 11 to 42 teeth so it's got a pretty big spread which is very nice and then with the xt derailleur we do have the shadow plus clutch that's that little gray like lever that i just flipped up so in the up position it's tight the chain is not going to bounce around quite as much and this is actually a, a component that you'd see on like mountain bikes and stuff for when you're going off-road but even if you're on road with this bike at higher speeds, there's just more like rattling that could happen. So I love that they've included that clutch. The 4.0 also had that clutch though. It was just Shimano Dior, not XT. There's that slap guard again. If you put it in the down position, you're gonna be able to shift gears a little bit easier. You're gonna be able to do some maintenance on that rear wheel a little bit easier. So it's something worth considering. The chain ring is slightly different. This is 48 tooth versus 40 on the Vado 4.0. So it's a little bit of a, a larger ring that's going to slow your cadence and help you hit and maintain those higher speeds a little bit better so with the higher powered motor and a larger ring this bike's going to be easier to ride at those higher speeds that's one of my big takeaways um, and then again one more gear 11 speeds instead of 10 speeds while we're talking about the interfaces we we're talking about through axles and stuff they're using five millimeter like hex bolts on this and then up here you also need a tool to adjust the saddle height or the seat post and that's because again i think this is kind of a commuter setup and they didn't want to have quick release where someone could come tamper with your bike and take it um, i love the kickstand that they've got it's fairly minimalist it's not bouncing around a whole lot in my ride test but it is adjustable length and i think this is another custom part from specialized i haven't seen this particular kickstand on any other bike they do have a 40 millimeter bolt pattern right there so you could add your own kickstand if you don't like it um, but it's been working out pretty well on a ride test as long as you're not in super soft terrain because the foot is just it's kind of a sharp pointy end it could sink in if it's really wet interesting pedals like nylon platform with almost like skateboard grip tape situation crank arms will be slightly different lengths depending on what frame size you get so we're on a medium i think these are 170 but if you go up to large or extra large you get 175 so taking advantage of you know all the different components and stuff which are all branded specialized to dial this in to get the fit just right uh, for you know the frame so that it's all kind of balanced and then of course brakes brakes is another area where they've they've really upgraded going from the four to the five so these are Dior XT with tool free adjustable reach that's pretty awesome because if you if you're wearing gloves which we actually were it's it's a nice day it looks nice out here but it gets a little cool when you're riding at high speed so I was able to dial those in a little bit before I ride. And then they go all the way down here to the Dior XT dual piston calipers with Ice Tech rotor. So 180 millimeter in the front, a little bit larger. It's gonna give you better stopping power and cooling features up front. And then in the rear, 160. So this bike, I mean, look at this. We got reinforcement eyelets on, uh, on the rims, 28 spoke pattern and and basically on the rims 28 hole versus like 32 or 36 pretty lightweight stuff this bike being a medium compared to the large that i was looking at yesterday the 4.0 versus 5.0 they weigh roughly the same which was surprising to me because the battery is definitely heavy the battery is like a whole pound heavier but between the ice tech rotors maybe the derailleur upgrade i'm trying to figure out where else they did weight savings the fact that it's it's just a different frame size helps i guess but you know it's about the same 52 53 pounds right in there depending on the step through or the high step not bad considering how feature complete this thing is that's one of my big takeaways you know just looking at these two bikes whether you get last year's bike and you've got those tires that are slightly different and the blocks display which can be upgraded by the way you can go to the new 
Um, I, well, I forget what this is called. I'm, I'm here with Charlie McCormick from Electricity Bikes in DC. And can you help me with the name of that sure. display again? TCD display, so Turbo Connect display. And that's new for like 2020? It is. It's a neat feature. It is, so finally they, had, they struggled with some issues with connecting Bluetooth on, uh, on both the Levos and the Vado and the Como line. Uh, so they went with their own display that they manufactured, which allows you to connect to the wonderful Mission Control app finally. How long have you been a specialized dealer, Charlie? I think it's well over 10 years. I think it's probably close to 20 years. I think. So you're doing well. You've, you've actually got several shops here in DC, right? We do. We have three locations. That's awesome. Although our primary location is that huge new showroom you saw there on uh, Wisconsin Avenue in Tenley Town. Well, I'm super excited to be able to look at like back-to-back -back model years. So the takeaway for me, I'm trying to go through all the details with you. It's kind of like an overview, but with the Broza drive system, you're getting super smooth performance and it's really quiet. There's like a Gates carbon belt drive inside the motor. That's right. So it's not just gears on gears. It's very responsive. 90 newton meters of torque is incredible. So this is a motor that, I mean, it's like a speed motor, but it's almost like a mountain motor. And I think I have used this. It's the S aluminum. That's correct. Right? Cause now they have the S magnesium as well. So this is slightly heavier, but still excellent performance. I mean, very torquey uh, compared to say the other bikes in the category. It's not only really strong torque, but just smooth and quiet torque. Yeah. And, and that's great for the seamless cycling experience. So it doesn't feel like you're necessarily on an electric bike. It feels like you're, you're just having a really great day on your bike. Yeah, absolutely. And up to 380% proportional feedback. So if you're pressing in, it's it up to 380% versus the Vado 4.0 was like 320, I think. That's correct. So everything on this is ramped up and that comes back to the slightly larger chain ring. I do love that they've got this plastic guide here. And if you see how close the chain ring is, it's kind of tucked in close to the frame. It almost acts as a full guide. So you really shouldn't have too many chain drop issues. And even the, uh, the chain ring itself, it's aluminum alloy to save on weight. And it's a narrow wide tooth pattern and that really locks into the chain. So that's something that's really nice, you know, going at higher speeds again, the vibration we talked about the clutch, the slap guard, almost every aspect of this bike, like when I dug into it, I felt like they dialed it in. Um, my complaints or question marks is that, you know, there, some motors, I'd say most motors don't have any kind of like shift detection feature. So if you're pedaling with high torque and high power, you know, and you're shifting gears hard, you can, you can kind of damage the chain or the cassette. Um, but this is kind of an advanced bike. It's probably going to someone who already knows how to ride. And the key is you just ease off a little bit when you're shifting gears. The system measures your rear wheel speed and they've really tucked the magnet in nicely. It's on this little plastic plate right there versus on a spoke because those magnets can get bumped out of place. So it's really like compact and sturdy and it's measuring pedal cadence and pedal torque. And it's very, very dynamic and responsive. So if you, if you like, just ease off a little, the motor really responds almost immediately. And that means you could shift gears without having that mashing experience. But that is one of the areas where it's like, okay, you know, compared to like a Bosch motor that has shift detection as a software feature, this is more advanced and it's, I'd say a little bit more performance oriented. Then the rack, we talked about not having the support strut on the side. Yeah, you're paying some more money, but Specialized has a great warranty. There's a little bit of complexity with the display that we're gonna go into in a minute, but I want to give you a chance to say anything that you feel like I missed or just uh highlight According, and I think we, when I've talked to Bros before, they said they have a similar software-based feature, but I believe it's sensing, of course, because it's tech, torque sensing, mm -hmm. it's backing that pressure off on the chain when it, so if you kind of tell it you're about to shift by backing off yeah. the pedal slightly, then it does do a little bit of that. But it's just super responsive. Not quite as nice as the Bosch, I'd say. And it's just a different kind of thing, because in some cases, I think for mountain biking in particular, it's like, do you want shift detection? You, if you're, this is a, like a tr rapid fire trigger shifters up here. We've got two way, so forward or back like that. Multi shift, one, two, three on the low gear. So that's, this is a very performance oriented bike. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing it doesn't have shift detection, but I am trying to review the bike. So I'm trying to help people understand like the difference between one motor and another. This one is lightweight, it's compact. It has like a very, uh, I think even smaller than 175. It might be 168 millimeter Q factor. So the drivetrain's really narrow until you get back here and get the, you know, 148 boost hub spacing. That was, to me, that's interesting. And it might come back to a wider uh, bracing angle for the struts on this rack to give that up to, I think it's 20 kilograms. Yeah, 20 kilograms. So we're up to 44 pounds of weight capacity. 
they're really di it, to me this is like a sports car that's also a utility car totally <laughs> they blended it when it's beautiful i mean look at this stem it's it's like almost ovular it's not circular and even the spacers this is not just like off the shelf stuff it's all custom it almost reminds me of like the aerodynamic designs it's a uh, what is hydroformed aluminum alloy frame that's got that nice swooping design to it even the battery pack so it's paint matched beautiful pack here and then having those bottle cage bosses that's always differentiated them i'm about to unlock the pack by the way and we got this abis like key code card and it has a number on the back and you can match this key if you get abis accessories so maybe that folding lock we talked about or there are even bosses right here on the seat stays so you can get one of those like abis frame locks right and then you only need one key and that's such a big deal for me personally i'm kind of a minimalist because i travel everywhere i don't want tons of keys floating around i want one key that works one bike that works so to me this bike is very appealing in that sense as well so i'm going to insert the key uh, there we go turning it and then it it kind of clunk and the, the battery loosens up like that and it can tip it out it comes out kind of at an angle like this i'm just trying to be very careful with it so again this is about one pound heavier i think it's like 7.5 pounds um and it's there we go 36 volt 16.8 amp hours for 604 watt hours of capacity so it's like 20 percent more capacity than the other battery on the 4.0 and this is a, i think a 900 hundred dollar part to replace if you That's want correct. to get an additional pack one of the question marks though look at this nice color matched plastic cover compared to red over here so when you order it you will probably want to order you the same order color the color well you can uh uh you know I, I believe it will actually fit in there without the shroud it just won't be pretty it will lo look sort of yeah you know very um boxy and the, the i think the shrouds are um you know a hundred bucks a piece so it's it's adding up you know you're getting close to a thousand bucks for your new battery are you saying you could take off that that plastic cover so, so this plastic cover just unscrews here Mm -hmm. uh, when you get the, the battery, it's naked without the, the cover. Oh, I didn't so, realize that. Yeah. Okay, and I you, thought you had to like custom buy the battery with a color matched cover. No, you buy the cover, you buy the battery, and then you get the cover. So that makes sense. Yeah. That makes more sense. I mean, right, it seems obvious. Let's put it back on the bike over here, because that's another one of the areas where there's a little bit of finessing required to get it to line up perfectly. Apparently, Specialized did some work, and they added some padding, so there's less kind of play in the battery on that's the right. frame. So he's lining up the bottom just right, try not to force it, and then you get that that top part right. And then a little kind of gives it. I like to it, give it a little push, and then a, a because it will make a sort of phantom click we call it, and the battery won't be totally in. So you do have to give it a little a little bang like that with mm -hmm. your wrist, and then give it a tug to make sure it's actually in there. Makes sense. These are brand new bikes as well, so that's all all set and again good weight distribution batteries low on the frame motor right there in the center as well beautifully integrated i think it might be time to jump into the display here i can take that that key again charlie and maybe you can toss the charger in my backpack while we boot this up so the display panel um it's a little bit more compact than some of the other e-bikes uh, the big things but that's going to keep it pretty well protected right even at bike racks and stuff this looks more like a cycle computer than a big display Okay, we've got the button pad easy to reach right there next to the bell as well, but there's no power button over here. So you actually have to reach down and press and kind of hold for a second on top of the battery pack. It's got a five LED charge level indicator built right in. The display boots up, grayscale monochrome. It is backlit, which is nice. There's a little light button here on the ring so we can turn the lights on or off. Let's see, there's the headlight we were talking about. I think, was this like 250 lumens or something, Charlie? It said 205 lumens, but I think, you know, apples to apples with an American style light, it, there's, it, this has got a focused beam pattern. Yeah. So you're getting a very bright pathway forward, especially at high speed that you can see, you know, potholes or anything else. When it aims where you, where you steer, and I like that they mounted it up here versus down here on the arch, because that would be bouncing. This is on the sprung portion of the frame versus unsprung, and it's aluminum housing that we talked about, so it's very tough. And then the rear light is visible from the side, so it's not just straight on, and it's positioned far out of the way from the rack. So that's the lights. And then again, this is backlit. You can't, just can't see it because it's a really beautiful day here. We've got a set button, a plus, and a minus. And the plus and the minus go through the different levels of assist, as you might expect. So there are three bars. So I'm at the highest, mid, low, and then off. And you can ride it just as a bicycle. And that 
coming back to how efficient this bike is and rigid, it's just, it's very responsive that way. And I should say, you know, comfort, I should have mentioned this before, but 30.9 millimeters on this seat post, we took this out, it's about 340 millimeters long, and it's got like some holes drilled in the side to reduce weight. So it's kind of punched out, like sometimes you see rims that are punched out. So this bike, they've really optimized for weight savings. But if you wanted to, you could swap this out with like maybe a connect suspension seat post. Sure, or even a cobble gobbler might be uh, less sort of weight, uh, but the, the Connect is really the most popular. Um, coming back to the display, there's the plus, there's the minus. If you hold the plus button, uh, it, it activates walk assist, right? Which is kind of handy if you get a flat tire or you're just trying to go through a park where maybe it's not appropriate to ride. And if we hold down or the minus key, I forget what, I think that does like a trip reset. There we go. And let's see here, there's the set button at the top. If we click that, it goes through a bunch of different pages. So see the look icon and the one, this is page one. So page one shows your speed, there's a clock, battery percentage, very nice. And then actually a 10 bar battery infographic, so 10% increments, much better than the you know 20% on those five dots down there. And then distance, so if I click set, it goes to timer and it, and it actually shows pedal cadence right here. The Broza motor does support up to 120 RPM pedal support, so it's like, if you're going into a hill and you downshift to kind of give yourself a mechanical advantage and the motor, you want the motor to be able to keep up with you. So 120 RPM is great. That's that's as high as it goes right now between these other mainstream motors like uh, Bosch, Yamaha, Shimano. So I click select again or set and we've got a heart rate uh, readout. So there, this does have a wireless integration with the phone. And Charlie's gonna show that in a second. And power in watts and then kilocalories. And then we're on the last one, max speed, 28.8 miles per hour odometer. So lots of great information here. And if we, I think we hold the left and right buttons here, the, these basically just duplicate like the set. So you can go back to page five, page four or forward. So they just, it's the same kind of thing. But if you hold them both, it lets you change like, like what is this, the units. Right now it's in miles per hour, but we can change to kilometers per hour if we, we hold these two things. We'll cycle through a whole bunch of menus. The display is pretty feature rich, but it was actually easier to connect to Mission Control than I thought. You just download the app, turn on your, open it basically, and then it searches for a bike and you pair it with the serial number. And then this gives you a pin number and then you type the pin number and it's like, okay, you're at the bike. There we go. And it matches it up. And just tell me what the, the app does here, Charlie. Right, so the app has a lot of different features uh, from uh, tuning your motor if you'd like to tune your, your the amount of support it gives you in each of your modes to find your sort of Goldilocks support level. Yeah, instead yeah. Instead of it being, uh, you know, a, a rigid dictation of what level, what, how much support each level gives. Uh, and also your, your peak power in each, uh, in each mode. Um, back to the main screen. If there is a problem with your bike, you're able to diagnose it and uh, give whatever error code it might be having uh, to the support people, support shop that you're working That's with. That's nice. Um, you're allowed to record, it'll it'll record your ride, so when you, when you start a, a ride, it has a mapping feature, and it will start your ride. But most significantly uh, is the smart control feature. So that allows you to, uh, to turn, you know, put in how much battery you want to have remaining after your ride and set the distance that your ride, uh, that you're planning to ride. Okay. And then it will leave that much battery at the end of the ride. Very cool. We've been talking about this bike for 30 minutes. There's so much about these bikes to share. Um, and again, we've done the Vado 4.0, tried to highlight the differences between them. I'm just gonna hop on this thing and do a quick ride. I'm, I like to take it up to the highest level of assist, personally. You're gonna be able to hear the motor a little bit better, but it's such a quiet motor. And it just it's just super powerful too. And super responsive. I mean that's to me that's such a big a big thing, just how how quickly this motor activates and how quickly it stops. You don't need motor inhibitors or anything. It's one of the fancier uh, mid-drive units and then climbing power we don't have big hills around here but you know it's just no problem i don't have to get out of the saddle at all i don't have to worry about even even shifting gears you don't have to shift as frequently if you don't want to if you're someone who likes to pedal at a lower cadence um, because the motor is that much more powerful 
pretty stable. Just cruising along in the grass here. Getting a little bit of vibration, but the, the suspension fork definitely helps. And I, you know, it's always a trade-off between that immediate responsive performance versus comfort. Having no problem with like the one finger braking here. Then these are like mountain bike brakes. The lightweight, cool ice tech rotors. And he's got the lights on. I think they come on by default since this is a speed pedelec. Super, super beautiful. This whole place. Let's see if we can make it up this curb. <laughs> yeah, brute force. Oh yeah, let's check it out in the shadows. Look at that light. That's awesome. I'm gonna hit the cobblestones. Cobbles are nice. Oh yeah, here we go. That is very quiet. And fairly comfortable with the slightly wider 1.85 inch tires. It's not a road bike tire. You get more friction, there's a little bit more weight, but on an e-bike, it's really not that, that big of a deal. Okay guys, from here you can see that 48 tooth chain ring. Uh, we've got a nice, let's see, 11 to 42 tooth cassette. I was kind of surprised. I thought, well, with 11 sprockets, maybe they'd go 11 to 46 but 42 is still pretty good, and then they just made the chain ring uh, larger. Got that plastic guide, got those interesting uh, platform pedals, kind of the plastic build, and then I do have that one-way clutch. I'm gonna put it in the up locked position so we don't have as much chain bounce for this ride test. I might hit some cobblestones, do off-road a little bit, uh, some grassy sections, up to 90 newton meters of torque on that motor. Just very compact, very responsive. It's a it's a good setup. I do like Broza, and they've got that internal belt drive system that's just very unique. Um, so here we go. I'm gonna ride the highest level of assist so that the motor noise will be more pronounced for you. Oh yeah, Whew, no problem. Went up curbs, went off roads, cobblestones, and of course braking, doing very well. That larger rotor in the front just makes it, it you know, as your weight shifts forwards, that's where you want the extra braking power. So I'm glad they did a 180 up there versus 160 on both. Just everything on this bike is, is top notch. Yeah, good ride. Hey guys, we're back in the shop and I uh, got a couple of bikes lined up here with the two displays, a little bit easier to see the backlighting now that, uh, you know, it's a little bit darker. We got some shadows and stuff. One thing I did want to point out about the blocks display is that it had this nice micro USB port in the bottom, which could be used to sort of charge and maintain electronic devices. I think it's only 5.5 volts, 500 milliamps. So maybe not quite enough to do an iOS device, but if you have an Android or like some Christmas lights or just something fun, little boom box, um, that's one of the trade-offs when we go to the newer display. But the thing about this display, the blocks display, is it was mounted to the stem and there's like a metal interface right there, pretty nice. This one, they're actually mounting it next to the stem. And so you can slide it and move it around and have a little bit more space for a phone if you want to do something like that, right? If you wanted to make a, a center phone mount, which is popular with a lot of people since you are using it for directions and so on. Right, with the app, Mission Control app. And That's you've right. got a little mount plate. Quad lock. So many cool options for that. Now, Charlie, we were talking about some of the power curve options or sure. just how it's laid out. Just take us through this. What, what are we looking at? I mean, it is hard to navigate what the power actually is, but we've discovered some, we've uncovered some super secret data on different motor oh, systems. Oh boy. Right? So, so typical entry level drive is that like green it's, one. It's, yeah, and it's peaking out at just over 400 watts. Most of the 
uh, most of the entry level drives that would cover your active uh, active line plus your shimano and your specialized 1.2 like e. the e6000 versus the e8000 right, and right. you know we're looking here at that orange one that really dips down is the PWX. That's the one that tops out around 100, and I was always complaining about that. Um, but most of the newer drives do go up to that 120, but which ones actually hold? A lot of the Broza are actually the ones That's up right. at that top line. So the Broza keep keep uh, hammering out the power even up to 110. That's where the chart ends, but uh, they do support you up to 120 RPMs. Can, you had a picture of the Broza motor, right? Is yes, that floating around somewhere? Let's see That's here. That's this one. That's a cutaway of the Broza Alu. It's the same motor housing. It'll look the same for the Broza T and the Broza S, mm -hmm. but they uh, on the inside but they are slightly different in terms of the ratings. And then the magnesium, instead of aluminum alloy casing, has a mag casing. And then look at that belt drive and stuff. That's what I was talking about. So that is a Gates carbon belt drive and they've got a splined, ISIS splined interface there versus square tapered. So it's a pretty nice interface. And then this last screen here, that's the official like specialized motor watts comparison. So you, you can kind of match those uh, little line graphs to Charlie's bigger custom one, but we've got the 2.1, the 1.2, 1.3. I'm trying to call that out in each of the reviews, um, definitely back in the written review. And then they've got a competitor one where it shows like, you know, how the how the, the torque, torque drops yeah. off. So it's a pretty cool thing. Um, that's on your Evernote. I don't know if it's, maybe it's somewhere in the forums or uh, your yeah, site. I don't know if it is. I think this is just dealer only. Uh -oh. We're hoping to publish, <laughs> we're going to publish something on electricitybikes.com. Has got a lot of this motor comparisons because it is so confusing and it's so challenging people come in and they want to know what's the horsepower you know like a car yeah and it's just not a strict analogy to um, motors and manufacturers i think because of regulate regulatory concerns aren't haven't necessarily blasted out hey our motor gives out 600 watts or 500 watts uh-huh yeah and we're coming from like a euro thing where 250 watts is the max you have some really good stuff so yeah his site has has some great uh, resources on this stuff and i try to post a few things on the forum but i welcome you guys to kind of you know mix it in and share your own experiences feeling really thankful for uh just the opportunity to get to see this stuff and share it with you guys um, I feel really blessed to be in this position uh, to review bikes and help you out. I think Charlie's out there checking out the cobblestones. So I think that's it. You guys, thanks so much for hanging out. Had fun, got all the details on this, the length, the width, minimum saddle height. I measured two frame sizes. Again, electricity bikes right here in DC. Ride safe out there. I love you. Have fun. We'll see you next time.